Thank you guys for having me tonight here. And thank you guys for coming up. My name again is Alberto Arias, and I am an independent software consultant. Uh, one year ago, or one year and a half ago, I decided to go independent. I was working with uh, Enersor Hydro Mississauga at the moment for like seven years and a half. And, and now I'm doing, a, you know, a getting gigs in uh, like fixed price uh, with uh, electric utilities. Uh, three are my clients, and one was my previous employer. And, um, and well, everything about Kotlin, for example, has something to do with this, is that I wanted to be ready to uh, to jobs regarding Java or the Java platform. And, um, and I was experimenting with and uh, learning Scala uh, in the previous years. And, and Kotlin is part of that. Is I, I found this language, I, I like it, uh, and it's like just in case something happened in, in Java, well, I'll, I, I'll be ready. Uh, so far, I have been, with this client, I have been working in, in .NET, and, and uh, well, uh, Kotlin is, um, what's Kotlin? Uh, Kotlin is an open source uh, since day one, a statically typed programming language created by JetBrains. And it targets the JVM, uh, also could target uh, JavaScript, or, so that means that could transpile to JavaScript. It's designed to interoperate 100% with, uh, Java, with Java code, and it allows uh, gradual adoption. So you can start in your, in your Java projects, you can start introducing files in, in Kotlin, and they can uh, use each other without any problem. So uh, JetBrains wanted to have to create a, an expressive language, you know, modern language that feels more pragmatic, and so that it was easy to, uh, you know, to create tools for. So that was the, the reason for, for them to to bother creating another language, and they are currently using it for, for four products, and uh, they are using it, um, so I mean, four products are done completely in, in, in Kotlin, like uh, the Project Rider, which is the uh, C-Sharp IDE, um, but they are now using it in, in several, several products where they have uh, uh, code in Java and Kotlin. So they initially look into Scala and Ceylon, but they, uh, they, they, for example, about the Scala, what I heard about from them is that Scala uh, is very, it feels complex, it's difficult to, and it's complex to, to create tools for, and they have a, actually a big team to create the, the Scala plugin for uh, IntelliJ. So, they, that's why they, and the other thing is at the moment, the compiler was very slow. So they wanted to create, first of all, a, 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 you know, a requirement for the new language would be to have a compiler at least close to the, the Java compiler in, in terms of speed as well. And they also uh, check into C long, but uh, for other reasons, they, they uh, decided just to create their own, and that started in 2010. And so the, the language is not really, really new. And in, in, the, in February, so almost one year ago, yeah, one year ago, they released uh, Kotlin 1.0, and now they are about to release 1.1. And the, the language is evolving very fast, like they are uh, fixing things, releasing features, like it has a good dynamics going on, good momentum. You guys can uh, check uh, the, their website, codlinlan.org. Uh, it's pretty good, good documentation. And you, find all, you will find also videos and a lot of resources. The documentation, I, I, I think, is really good and easy to you know, navigate around. 
So why, why Kotlin? Why, again, another language? Um, now I'm going to talk in my perspective, right? Again, I am not um, um, a Java expert, for example, but uh, I know about programming languages. I, I mostly work, again, in C Sharp. And, but, you know, I, I like la programming languages. something that I try to, you know, be kind of up to date. And, and I like a lot that the, this language is very concise. It's expressive. Like, it feels like when you guys are writing, for example, Python, that kind of feeling that you can read the, the code easily. And uh, you can also uh, write the code fast. Like, I didn't have the same feeling with Scala. That's why I, uh, I like the language. It's very powerful. But that's why I, I say, no, let, let's, let's see what Colin offers. And I decided to keep with this one, like play with this one more. So it's, uh, again, open source Apache 2 license. It targets the uh, Java 6. So that means that for the guys doing Android that are kind of tied with uh, Java 6 can use this much more language, more power, powerful. And um, for that reason, uh, the adoption for uh, Kotlin is happening mostly in that community. Um, small footprint. Uh, the, the standard library is very small. It's not even one, one gig. Uh, interoperability is great. Like, it's very, we, we, we are going to see something about that. Just works. Uh, Modern features, uh, I like the data classes, extension functions, type inference, uh, functional programming. So it really supports the imperative and object-oriented paradigm, but also the functional programming very well. And we are going to see some of those cool features. Um, this, this language really, honestly, is, is easy to learn. It's not the same feeling that you have learning, for example, Scala. You know, it's like, oh, you kind of have to re review uh, a subject like twice, right? And it's fun. That's one, I guess, a f uh, characteristic that any programmer would like to enjoy what they are doing. OK, how can I use this language? Um, you could use it in the command line using the repo or just calling the compiler like you will do with Java, the Java compiler. And you could use it in, in the most popular IDEs, like IntelliJ, of course, and Eclipse, NetBeans, and Android Studio. Too. And you could use the build automation tools like Maven. And OK, so. Well, for the installation, let's skip the Java uh, installation. You guys know about that. But uh, to install Kotlin, very easy. You could use Brew. Brew, install Kotlin. That's it. And then you get the, the compiler. You, get, you could start using the REPL, experimenting with the language. OK, so let's start the, the tour. <clears throat> I'm going to be. Mostly showing uh, code. I think the, the code uh, is going to talk by itself. Like, I have uh, examples. But, well, before we, we start with that, let's call the Okay. Let's call the, the REPL. <clears throat> OK, so the REPL is, is just a, a way to use the, the, the language in a kind of like as an interpreter. So it stands for read eval loop. Um, and we can type any, any expression here. So you get like a calculator, for example. You can, uh, you can type statements. Um, so, so it's a, a good way to start you know, playing with the language. 
for example, let's create a variable. Let's say i is an integer e and is 33. So you, so in in this language, you can create two types of, of variables. One is uh, really a variable with var, or you could create a, a read-only value like in Scala. So we could do that, like, let's say name equal. OK, so I, as you can see here, I don't have to type semicolons. Uh, uh, in, this, in the second line, I, I wasn't explicit about the type. I, but there is a type inference going on, and a name is a string. Uh, OK, so you can create. Uh, let's say <coughs> a list using this um, constructor here. Let's say Bob. <coughs> and Let's, let's say that we want to loop through that list and print the items. So that will be for f in friends. OK. Mm. OK, what's going on here? Sam, friend, friend, not friends. Oh, <laughs> yeah. But anyway, but uh, the other thing that we could do if we work with the ID, let's see if I can. OK, perfect. So in the ID, we could use the REPL here just to let you know. So tools, calling, and the calling repo. And it's the, the good thing about this is that um, you have, um, well, let's do this better. You have the, the help of the ID. You have the uh, IntelliSense, all the stuff, right? And OK, so let's say we have, again, a value like name. Uh, we are going to print that name. You see, I, you have the, the help of the ID, which is pretty cool here. So let's use this one, for example. And here is command enter to, to run this thing. OK, so as a next step, if you guys are interested, you could start playing with this. and. Keep the documentation on the side, and again, it's, it's pretty straightforward. OK, so let's start the tour now in the different files that I prepared for you guys. Uh, so the famous hello world. So I have one function here, main, is the entry, entry point for that ap application. You actually can have a many main functions uh, no more than one per file. So this is pretty useful to, to create, you know, uh, to test your programs. And so if you have many anyways, the, the idea is going to, I have to define what's the, the, the entry point. But in this case, it, it, the idea is doing it that automatically for me. So notice that the functions start with this keyword fun. And I have, in this case, arguments, uh, like in Java, similar, similar thing. I'm not using those in this case. And it, it, this function doesn't return a value, so it's, it's void, right? Uh, but in, in, in the Kotlin jargon, is unit, similar to Scala. And I have, in this case, only one. I have a block here. 
but only one line with the print line that you see there. Uh, very simple, this is, as you can see, this is a uh, top level function. There, is, there are no classes here. Uh, you can have top level fun functions all over. Uh, it's, in that sense, it's, for example, like, like Python. It's more flexible in that regard. Um, OK, so let's go to something more. Let's start talking about the data types. Uh, numbers. You have the int, double, long, float, short, byte. That's all. Uh, you can, as you can see, I'm declaring uh, variables here, <coughs> and I can, incre I can increase the value here in this case. Uh, these guys cannot be null. By default, Kotlin uh, doesn't allow null values or null or null to uh, objects, uh, to instances of uh, classes. So, but we are going to see later how we can deal with that, because in some cases, we need to eventually uh, have uh, null could be a, a possible stay for, for, a, for an object. But also, because you are dealing with, if you are dealing with existing Java code, you may need to, to deal with possible null values, right? So anyway, uh, here there is type inference. Uh, is this one is uh, is going to be a, an integer? Uh, but if you want to manipulate uh, longs, you have to. Uh, if you want to define a literal long, you have to put the uh, suffix l. So in this regard. It's Java, basically. It's the same, same thing. So um, the question is, what is different here? Um, not really, nothing. Um, so I think we could, we could continue. But uh, yeah, you, yeah there, OK, so again, var is something that you can actually change the value in. Yeah, so it's really variable. But val, will be final, yeah, val will be yeah. It's a read-only okay. value that you create and you don't want to That's change. Huh? Yeah. So if you try to change, of course you're gonna you, you cannot compile it actually. So let's go with the strings. In the string, we are gonna see a few th few new things. So I have this name again. Uh, this is an integer here, but uh, I'm gonna use it later. Uh, I, as you can see, I can change the, the, the name because it's var. And then I have some characters, some char literals here. And uh, this one is explicit, but uh, it's, it's no need to do that. It's, in this case, it's easy to read this. It's good to be explicit when you want to uh, have a readable code. But when it's obvious, no problem, right? Uh, how did this thing? Uh, Headline, you have the escape characters, same thing like Java. Uh, then I have a concatenation here, nothing new. And then a multi-line string. Yes. And I think this is probably different to Java. Yes. Uh -huh. yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, similar to other languages anyway. And in this case, I'm going to preserve also spaces. OK, so then I have concatenation again, and another uh, strings here. But in this case, I am using a string interpolation. This is one way. When I, it's just only one variable is uh, in this way, we, uh, uh, dollar sign and the variable. But if you, you, you write any expressions, this is a very, very simple one. but. Is going to be, you, you need the, the brackets to do that. And Does that, does that work in the triple quote string as well, the multi-line string? Uh, um, good question. Um, let me think. I believe so, yeah? Nice. I believe so. I, I didn't try that. Yeah, we could, we could, we could do something here. Let's 
Do oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, let's. Okay. Uh, let's run this thing actually here. Uh. <laughs> okay, so let's go with the next one. Booleans. So I have a condition here, made of the, the previous values, uh, no big deal. Same, same operators like in Java. So you guys are going to feel at home here. Uh, so it should print true in this case. Uh, Uh, it supports what? Does it support uh, symbolic method names or, or op operator overloading? Yeah, I think so, yeah. yeah. The, let's go with conditionals. More interesting. OK, so here you're going to see a few, few new things. Uh, again, the condition, but I'm using it in, in the, the same condition that we saw before. I'm using it to build an uh, if statement. Simple. And this one, we are adding the else. Right? But well, there is something new here. You could use it as expression. So a nice thing, also like Scala. Um, and in here is the complete statement. Well, again, it's an expression, but the, the, the complete if st with the else if else, OK? Um, Let's go with another structure, is the when. The when you, is like the, a way to replace the switch in, in C or Java. And, but it, it ha, it's more powerful. Because you, as you can see here, I created here this thing called teenager, which is a, a range. So a range is kind of like a, a mechanism to, to uh, easily iterate to a, through a range of values. It's like Python, same thing, Python ranges, OK? So then uh, here I will be using it. So I want to, have to, def to assign the value to feedback based on a when. I can use that when has a, a statement, but also has an expression. Has, has expression is very, very nice because it's more functional, more uh, feels like it's, it's, it's returning a, a value based on, on this kind of argument, age, right? So if there are, I have a few examples here, but it's more robust than that. So let's say if when age is one or, or two, uh, return this string. But if is in the range of 3 to 12, is kido, return kido. If it's in <laughs> teenager, so I can use the, the previous, the defined range, it could be complicated. And 33 is, if it's a, the specific value of 33, uh, and I, I see I can, in this block, I can have multiple, multiple uh, statements. But it's the last value that is returned. So OK, and we can have things like using the type. OK, if this is a list and integer, and we didn't call that before, do this and return that. Else, something that we didn't catch before, then it prints something, return this value. Sorry, it returned this, <laughs> this string here. OK, so it's, yeah. Yeah, it's going to be going uh, in sequence in terms of first trying to see what condition apply first, and boom, then it executes everything, returns the string, and breaks. So you don't need a break, like in Java, right? So, so if you put the is in at the beginning, now the other condition. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so, so the, uh, I think it was tweeted recently that he wants to add uh, the, the enhanced switch statement to Java. So basically, like, 
in, in functional programming, they call it pattern matching. Can you yeah. do like data extractions in here? Is this actually pattern matching, or is it just like so? If int was something that had properties, could I extract a set of properties from it, or is that well? Uh, I, don't I don't know really, okay. but this is no prop. This is no really pattern matching. Yeah. Well, as soon as it, I, saw it, I was like, is this? It, I mean, it, mm -hmm. Yeah, this is not like power matching like Scala, but the, well, they have this. Uh, I, that's a good question. I'm going to sure. confirm that, yeah. and I, let you, I could let you guys know. But they have, for example, C classes that we are not going to see that because the language is, is big, right? And we are going to see the most important things about uh, classes, but C classes, as I understand, is for that, like in Scala. But yeah, I haven't played with that. OK, loops. So we have this, this uh, four. Uh, I want to iterate in this, the, the 12 first digits and print them. Uh, I define a range of digits, the digits, and Yeah, there is a type range, uh -huh, like a kind of built-in class for that. Mm -hmm. And we can construct that using literals, but I guess there are, they, they, probably there is a way to do range, you know, parentheses and construct it in the, yeah, exactly. Um, okay, so the four, which is very common in other languages, very, very practical. And I can define uh, those ranges with a step. And this one is actually descending, as you can see here, down to. <coughs> um, and I put it in. Yeah. So can you, can you just reverse the order and we'll do the sending? Uh, yeah, well, actually, uh, in, based on the documentation, when I was writing this, you know, all these demos. Uh, apparently, if I do uh, 19 dot dot, it should work, but it didn't work for me. I, it's, you know, the language is still, yes. <laughs> I, I think it was the, the only hiccup that I, that I saw. A very, very, very silly thing. But in theory, it should work. Uh, so I end up uh, doing the down two, and it worked. <clears throat> okay, so, mm, so no big deal here. I create a list here of CDs, and then I iterate to that. OK, uh, we have the while structure here. It's really nothing happening here, just to, <coughs> to show you the, the structure very as expected, right? And the do while. And maybe this is a little interesting. I have uh, two for loops, uh, one nested, and I am, what I'm doing is, you know, breaking when the condition is happening, happened. And as you can see, the break, in this case, and for the break, I am, uh, if I leave it just break, the break is going to exit the f first loop, right? <clears throat> but with this label, it's going to, to jump to that label, so it's going to get out of the, main uh, loop. And continue just like in Java and other languages, just continue with the next iteration of that specific uh, loop, right? So, um, okay, let's, uh, talking about reusing code here, it's a little example, I created this folder with uh, this uh, file, I just one function that you want to reuse in other files. So very simple to calculate the area of a circle. And in here, I'm just importing uh, that file, everything in that file. Well, just, to, just to illustrate that, um, I guess very it's easy to understand um, like that. Mm. The way that you import things is also comparable to Python, the Python way. Um, 
So there are much more than this, right? So you can kind of create alias to uh, libraries and, or functions that you are importing. OK, here, yeah, there is nothing special. Just using this. Uh, well, if there is a, let's say, a collision, then you have to be explicit about which one you are referring to. But yeah, in my example, yeah, no, there is no problem here. Um, yeah, it's like, like, I guess you solve that in, in C Sharp or, or Java. Uh, you have to kind of, yeah, yeah. This, this, compile, this ID will tell you, and then you have to be pro explicit about which in particular you are using. OK, so let's go to collections. Collection is very, very big. Uh, I'm going to start closing this. Did you guys know Scala is similar? And it's similar now to Java streams. So uh, let's close everything. But let's talk uh, about one of the most Im important. OK, so let's check this. Okay, this is the factorial. Uh, and I am using the when has an expression. So I return the value of that uh, expression. And if it's i is either 0 or 1, return 1. Otherwise, uh, is i multiplied by factorial of i minus 1 is just to show you some, you know, the recursive way of doing it. This is not the most optimal way to do it, but yeah. OK, so in this program, we are in this, uh, in the main function, we are going to use this uh, factorial function. OK, I have uh, an array of friends. Uh, array of array of strings. So uh, you can see this is a way to construct uh, um, an, ar an array, uh, but in a generic way. Uh, there are there are other ways of specifying the type, um, but um, this is a. Uh, I, I just want to show how to, you know, go through the the array items here. Yeah, exactly. Are available by by, by default. Mm -hmm. Okay, for, just to show you a few ways of using uh, arrays. I, I am I, I here and trying to show or display one of the items in the in the array the size um, and this one is a little more interesting i am constructing an array of 10 items and populating that with this factory function which which is using the uh, this function here that we defined before that top level function and here, we are passing a function. That's what I need to pass. But in this case, I am passing a lambda function, a lambda, sorry, expression, which says, OK, for every item that we are going through, apply the factorial. That's why it return. And that's how we build it. Mm -hmm. Yeah? So can you pass in, could you also do it just by passing in like a function reference? Like Correct, yeah, okay. as well. Uh, Yeah, um, OK, and then I, I display all the, the items for that array of factorials. Uh, I am doing for each item this, this I am applying this function. In this case, is a, a, again, a lambda expression. We are going to see a little more about that. But I am passing this lambda expression here to print everything. And here, we have an array of uh, integers. Look at this way of, uh, here I am saying int, int array of. So it's going to be 
is, is a, a specific array of integers and is more in, efficient in terms of space. And again, I am printing that, all the items. And so there are different ways of uh, dealing with uh, collections. But in here, I am using kind of a, a very idiomatic way of uh, coddling or doing it. Uh, but you could also uh, do it like in a similar way to, to Java. OK, so, <coughs> so and in. Mm -hmm. so, so before, when you, yeah, like when you say the, see the main method there, it's like array. You know, with the angle bracket string, but then you have interray as a type of the Uh-huh, yeah. So uh, it's like, is this, is the interay like a, an array of primitives? Or these, like, what's the difference between these things? No, that's what I was saying, that that's the, the other way of uh, defining, um, specifying the type of an array. Okay, so uh, if I, but if I did like array angle bracket int, int or integer, that would be, that would be e equivalent, yeah, thing. that would be equivalent. Okay. Uh-huh. Yeah. Pardon? Well, in based. what they say is okay. Everything is. That's a good thing. A good point here. Good question. Okay. Everything is an object. Everything is a grab. Let's say, but in of course, when it's compiled, everything in bytecode is the same thing. They they are using at the end a primitives. If you are let's say using an integer. At the end, you are using a, a primitive integer, yeah. But in uh, for you as a calling programmer, you have is a you are using an object of an integer with a lot of methods available, and you know. Okay, so <clears throat> uh, well, this is a very tiny thing about collections because there are so many so many things. Uh, it's, Again, like in, ja like in Scala, like sets, uh, mm, maps, hash maps, and vectors, and things like that. And for every structure, you have two flavors. The kind of the default one is immutable and the mutable. So uh, here I am declaring a value, uh, a list, which is mutable. If, I, if you want it immutable, then just say list, and that's it. And this is um, uh, of integers in this particular case. And well, I am constructing it here. Then I create something that is called numbers copy, another list, but this one is immutable, and it's pointing to the same number, so the, so the same object. And so even though numbers copy is immutable, you still can add items because it's, it's the, what you cannot change is the reference, you know, the pointer. But you can still change the content, so the items that he had, he had at, related to. Uh, uh, okay, so I am printing the numbers here, then adding another item, um, printing a numbers copy, now has an, another uh, value, another item, because it's pointing to the same numbers list. Well, here I created a set of uh, Leather, so because this uh, doesn't, uh, uh, you know, allow duplicity, it's going to, you are going to end up with A, B, C, right? Only. So you get one, only one C. And here I print that out. <coughs> Let's check that, see what happened, what's happening here. Um, okay. Yeah. Okay, then I define this items list. And I show the first item, the last one, and then I do, I show the numbers that are even using this function applied to the list and with this uh, 
land expression. Notice that I am using it. It is uh, a calling thing <coughs> that is kind of syntactic sugar that summarizes uh, is the same like doing something like, uh, let's say, x and they the arrow and x. Yeah? So it says basically for every item that I'm applying the function, okay, do the modulus of that, and if it's equal to zero, then print it. Oh, sorry, return it. So I'm going to end that with just with a list of even numbers. Okay. So then I have this thing here, a, a mutable list of uh, names. And I'm using another function uh, on the collection that is basically saying, okay, if after applying this function, what is the, the return list is empty, so none is really it should be called empty, but if it's empty, print this. There are no, no friends with a name longer than six characters. Okay, so just to show you, you know, the kind of power that you have, you have is similar to Java streams in Java 8. Uh, okay, the first name of the list is returned by this function, first or null. And here I, am, uh, I created a I'm creating a hash map. I'm mapping names to integers, you know, like let's say names to people, people's names to their ages. And then I am just, uh, I want to print the age of Paul. So now just to give you an, uh, an idea of how, how you say this very, the, the, very succinct, it's very powerful. Uh, you have the typical functions that the, uh, to fold, to, uh, to map, to filter, all the stuff is available on the different collections. Uh, regarding the collection, so by mm -hmm. default, you will have an immutable collection, is it? Mm -hmm. So when you create it as a list of the items, you will have an immutable That's immutable, yeah. What is really in this case because it's a reference uh, type is uh, really that uh, value immutable value is immutable but in terms of the reference. But if you add more items, is you can do that. Yeah, it's, it's allowed. Yeah. So it's the same as Java. Yeah. What you cannot do is to uh, point to another, you know, to another, uh, to another list. Uh -huh. Okay, so let's go with functions. <clears throat> well, here I have uh, nested functions. As you can see, I have this one here that takes three parameters is uh, I have to explicitly in this case of course put the the types and also the type for the the function and this one run a statement and then returns the value you need the the return and you see here, again, the same function, but with para parameter overloading. And in the second one, is, uh, it changes in the third parameter. So later, I, I, I call my function, and I am passing two in the third parameter. So it goes with this one to print 27.0. So basically, yeah, it's, it's increasing the age in two, and that's it and has a double. Mm, and then I have a, 
function, again, the circle area. But in this case, it's one liner. Uh, you could do that. And, and if, um, in this case, uh, for the compiler, it's, it's possible to infer the, the type. So you don't need to be explicit about that here. So in summary, basically, you don't need to be explicit about types when it's, it's obvious. Yeah, but if, for example, in a function that is recursive and is very complex, the compiler is not going to figure it out. You have to be explicit. And uh, yeah, makes makes sense anyway because if it's something complex, is for uh, you know to help your fellow programmers. You do the <laughs> you are explicit about that. Okay, name parameters. Yep. Fifteen minutes. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so regarding uh, name parameters is uh, what you see here. I am calling my locking voice line here. It has nothing new. The only thing is that I am passing the parameters in this way, being explicit about which one. And check that, for example, item description has a default value, okay? I am not passing that, so. Regarding tail rec recursion, it's a, a nice feature that, for example, I undo is this uh, uh, fix. Uh, sorry, I'm finding the fixed point, um, and I have two two different flavors of the same function. This one is recursive, and in this case, the compiler is going to be able to convert that in a for loop or a while loop for me and make it more efficient is when, when the last uh, expression is reusing the same function. When, when it's the last thing. And when it's simple enough, as far as I understand. So in this case, apparently, this, this thing is going to be similar to this case here. OK, we are running out, uh, out of time. So we're going to be covering this, at least the functions a little more so, quicker. Like, yeah. So why should I use Kotlin? Like, it, it seems like it's mostly just syntactic. Is there something deeper in the syntax that would make you want to use it? Um, well, what's, what's easy? For how, how I say things is that uh, it's, a, it's a language that is offering you really modern features, functional uh, features. Now that, that we have Java 8, uh, it's not really that necessary. Like, but because yeah, things change. With Java 8, things change a lot. Like really, we, uh, Java is kind of uh, uh, modern. Um, but um, Well, for, for example, in my case, I'm going to, in this case, you know, this is about, this is probably just personal or, um, you know, in this, in that answer could bring different, different uh, arguments, no? But in my case, it's, it's that the language is very easy to learn. I, you, you, you can go through the documentation quickly, pick it up. If you, for example, know uh, Java already or Python, uh, it's, it's like Kotlin for me. It's like take take Java, remove the verbosity, you know the you know the semicolons, starting with that, but also removing uh, many other things that hopefully I can show a little bit of that uh, at the end, and also adding uh, more features like uh, extension functions and. Data classes. Data classes are pretty cool. Like, I'm going to show you that. You're going to jump a little bit. But just to, to show you one of the coolest features. There are, there are many. But OK, let's go with, um, ah, I think it's this one. You said it compiles to JavaScript as well, right? Sorry? You said it also compiles to JavaScript? Yeah. I haven't, experi yeah, I haven't experimented with that. 
uh, but uh, apparently that's available for production. So if you don't want to do, you know, people these days are doing all kind of languages to transpile to, to JavaScript. People are using TypeScript, uh, CoffeeScript, whatever. And well, now this is available too. So yeah, it's, that's a good thing because uh, if, you, if you know uh, Kotlin, you could do, you could target the JVM, uh, you could uh, target JavaScript, and they are working on native, and they are completely committed to that. They have a, uh, actually a big team for that. And also uh, Android. So, well, so you, you have different, different things to do. If, when native is available, you can target also uh, iPhone. That's, they, they want basically to, to be available for everything, target everything. OK, so data classes, one feature that I like. That's something that Java doesn't have. Uh, look, I am defining this class, car, car Colin. He has an IDE. He has a license plate, another IDE integer, and a local day. OK, so with this, you get, with this one line, you get the, co the constructor for free like with uh, the four properties. Uh, you as a calling programmer, you don't really deal directly with fields. There is a backing field for every property, but really the properties like in C Sharp is like a, a, a pair of methods that are acce accessing a, a field. So if you guys know C Sharp, it's basically the same thing. Uh, so that means that you get, for, in this, you get uh, getters and setters, the standard thing, like just to change the value, if you do the set, it's just going to put the value there, or you, you can get it. Uh, and you get um, all this. I think it's better to find the equivalent in, in Java. Uh, okay, now. Okay. OK, so this is the same class, the same, exactly the same thing. Only, the only difference is that in Java, you have fields as well. But so you, you get the constructor. You get the get ID, say the other stuff. And you get the equals. You get the hash code. You get the two string, the, uh, no, the copy. I didn't generate the, the copy. In this case, I used the ID to generate all the stuff. But, uh, the data classes are pretty good to do, you know, like to do backend development, of, let's say a sp a Spring Boot, and create those Java beans in a very, so you are going to save a lot of lines of code. And yeah, make things, make life easier, is how I see. Yeah. And I, in my case, I, that's the, the part where I intend to use Kotlin. Um, but yeah, in the last uh, year and a half, I haven't had it, actually the first gig in, in, in Java. But um, anyway, yeah, so that's the story. How we are in time. So five minutes. OK, so I'm going to. Ah, yeah, let's go with this one. OK, let's say uh, we want to extend uh, the string class. I create this one, GL, uh, and basically saying, OK, return another string. And it's basically the very same object that you are uh, using here. Do uppercase and add this symbol here. And then I, well, this is another example. This is a, an infix notation. So, see, if I want to use it to create a, an extension function in infix notation, you have to add this here, this keyword. And then I, cre I extend the integer class, uh, add the multiply by. I put uh, the parameters at uh, double, returns a double. Is this multiplied by the factor? OK, so in the main function, I do uh, to this name variable or value. I apply yell. So on the fly, I change uh, that class. It's like you are working with Ruby or like a, 
a dynamic language. That, the, the same feeling, right? So that's a lot of power. Like, you can do cool stuff. Yep. How, how are those scoped? Mm. The scope here is, in, in this case, in this file. But, so but you can import it. So they, they're, you have to import them, though. They, you can't do this globally to, to... No, this is not globally. It's, uh, for example, the, the YEL is available here in this file. But if you, you can import it That's in okay. whatever you That's want, right? I was more worried that it was global. No, no, no. <laughs> no. It's... Ruby lets you do that shit. That's <laughs> no, no. Here is, here is with all the nice constraints of a, a good compiler and the Java framework. And the, yeah, the Java platform, sorry. And look at the multiply. I am using it with infix, not uh, infix way. So three space multiplied by 2.5. That's, that's what the infix. What's the difference between these two? It's what is, what's no, it's the same thing. It's the same thing. It's a matter of taste. Probably you want to make it look like, like a multiply by like an operator of the language. Maybe, oh, okay, okay. you know? Yeah, it makes specific language, so it reads better. Yeah. So no, nothing really. It's just a way of showing that, like, present that. Uh, okay, I I think I I should uh, stop here. Uh, but <laughs> thank you, thank you, guys. Um, uh, I will say next steps: uh, go check the the website. Um, Mm, what else? Um, you guys can. Let me see if I can. Okay, this is the website. So I recommend you guys to check this uh, basic syntax, the idioms, uh, go then to the basics. Uh, we actually cover like half of this, the, the basic here. Um, in Data classes again is pretty cool, uh, and the most the 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 difference with Java is here, in the functions and lambdas and anonymous functions, you are going to see uh, you know find a lot of power there. Um, easy, it's actually easy to grasp, honestly. If you guys are good with Java, I think you are going to find this even easier. Yeah. I think, again, it's, it's, it's like these guys from, from Kotlin or from JetBrains took Java, kind of removed the things that everybody complains about that is too verbose, and then add this nice stuff from Python, Scala, this and that. So basically, they put the, the, the learning in, in programming languages of the last 20 years in this language. Yeah, it's, it's growing. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you.